Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. story is entitled The Saxon Shore. It is the story of a storm in England in 1952 and of how members of the United States Army worked to reduce the impact of disaster for civilians and the military alike. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young man, here's news about an important opportunity for you. Right now, the United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and service the complex equipment that science has brought into being. The need is vital, and you can be trained in such interesting career fields as radio, electronics, radar, photography, meteorology, mechanics, and many, many others. Yes, indeed. Here's your chance to acquire a skill that will be of value to your country and help you later in civilian life, too. For full details, visit the recruiting sergeant at your nearest recruiting station today. And now, your army presents the proudly we hail production, The Saxon Shore. Did you ever see a storm start? A single blade of grass nods. One cloud covers the face of the sun. A lonely whitecap erupts from the bottomless pit of the sea. At Norfolk in the north of England, they know the temper of a storm. For here lies some of the richest farmland in all of England, land reclaimed from the sea and work that was begun by the Romans. There are strong sea walls built to withstand the high tides, barriers that rise above the shallow dredged land. And so, there is always a oneness with the sea, an awareness of what terror can lie beneath the calm rise and fall of tides when nature goes on a rampage. Our story begins in a time of relative peace and quiet, 1952, when the first American soldiers returned to England after six long years away. It's a strange scene to soldiers spawned on admiration for a job well done as they roll noisily into quiet streets to stare into unfriendly faces. Uh, look who's here. Uh, Uncle Sam himself. What's here for this time, Yank? Go back where you came from, Yank, you ain't wanted. Hey, mister, what's the name of this town? Cool Albert. Hey. Here's a bloke who's thinking of staying a bit. Wants to know the name of this town. Well, Henry, maybe we best call the Prime Minister. He can arrange to present the keys to the city. Any girls around here, Mac? Mac, is it? Well, I like that. There are no girls around here for the likes of you. <laughs> That's what you think. Shut up, Johnny, will you? Pass the word around, will you, Mac? Tell him Johnny Driscoll from Lancaster, PA, is in town accepting any and all engagements. All right, Sergeant, let's move that truck out of there. Get rolling. We haven't got all day. Yes, sir. Albert, if I wasn't a man of advanced years, I'd take those blooming yanks by the scrub of the neck and toss them into the sea. Henry, let's face it. We've been invaded again. Hey, Sarge, what are we, in the Navy? Look, my friend, for your information, we're a service outfit. And if the front office said indoctrination in underwater demolition, I'd see that you were a frogman. That's where I got you fooled, Sarge. I can't swim. Well, yeah. But you'd learn. How, how's this, Sarge? That's fine. Now, just give it a hard yank. It'll blow up like a balloon. Same action as a Mae West. All you're doing is releasing some flasks of CO2. Oh, seriously, Sarge, why are we getting all this gear? The way I get it is that most of this area around here is reclaimed land. Every spring, they really get quite a blow with the weather. 
I guess there's nothing like being prepared when the floods come. Oh, pleasant prospect to look forward to. Okay, Sarge, here she goes. Look at the size of that, will you? How long can we stay afloat in one of these things, Sarge? Almost indefinitely. I can just see myself now. You know, I'll get one of these things and sail to Tahiti or Samoa, one of them places. And well, the idea for now is to get yourself as familiar with this thing as you can. Okay, guys. Dismiss. Uh, hey, Sarge. One last question. Uh, what's bothering you? Why do they call these things we wear May West? <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, break it up. Yo, Driscoll, Rennie, clean up some of this stuff before chow. Oh, great. Me and my big mouth. I get more duty around this joint than any other ten guys. You asked for it. You wouldn't be happy if you weren't screaming about something. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, uh, you going into Hunt Stanton tomorrow? No, I don't think so. What a burg. You know, Chuck, I'm not bragging, but I've known girls in places where guys never saw any before. This place has got me stumped. <laughs> you know just what you mean. I never met such people. I, I went into the local pub last week, and I might have had the measles. They give me the freeze. And I don't know that I blame them. You know, they've really had a tough over six years of real shortages. Yeah. In addition to warm beer. No, seriously, John, you have to hand it to these people. We eat more meat in a day than they get in a whole month. Okay, but why to chill? All right, don't be palsy-walsy, but at least say something. Yeah, look at it this way, John. Say you were back home in Pennsylvania. Don't I wish... some guy blew into town with a roll of bills in a big car and started talking big and waltzing around with your girl. It's not the same thing. No, no, it's not, but it's the way these people feel. They forget we're here to do an important job that's just as much their concern as it is ours. They only know that we're well-fed, well-paid, and more than likely making eyes at their daughters. <laughs> and that's it. Anything more to do? No, no, I guess that's about all. Let's head over and wash up before chow, huh? Uh, hey, I'll tell you what. Why don't you give Hunston a brush this weekend? The Sarge and I are going to hike over to Brancaster. There's some old Roman ruins we're going to look at. Roman ruins? You're kidding. Oh, come on. You'll have something you can write home for a change. Uh, stop your horsing around. You don't catch me chasing ten miles to see any busted buildings. All right, I don't care. Sit around all weekend, look at the barracks. Not me. I've got that never-say-die spirit. I'm going back into Huntington again. Won't you ever give up? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> The guidebook says since the 4th century A.D. Boy, it's over 1,500 years. Mm. You gotta hand it to those old Romans. They certainly did know how to build things. What do you think this was? Oh, let me see. All right, here it is. There's a Roman fort which once formed part of the defenses of the Letus Saxonicum. What was that? I don't know. Let me think. Letus. It means shore in Latin. I guess that would be the Saxon shore, huh? Oh, I get it. This was all part of a big defense line. Either to hold off the Saxons or to hold them in. It's as good a guess as any. Huh. You know, that's kind of a good description for this whole area. The Saxon shore. Now, how do you mean? Well, you know, like those sea walls down there. Kind of holding off the sea and the people around here holding in all that resentment towards us. Oh, you felt it too, huh? You know, it's strange. It wasn't like this right after the war. Well, were you stationed near here? No, I was in Germany, but I came to England on one of the first Army-sponsored tours. Oh. Everybody just couldn't be nice enough then. I guess all these years of privation have kind of soured their outlook. Come on, let's head over to the other side of the fort. The wind's cutting up a bit. Guess I should have taken a jacket along. Yeah, it's a good idea. I'd like a smoke. I can't even start a match around here. Hey, I think we're stuck. Look at the clouds. There's a storm brewing. They sure whip up in a hurry around here. Oh, here we are. Uh, that's better. Here comes your rain. Well, thanks to the old Romans, we'll be dry for a while anyway. I'd like to be back at the base before chow. Okay, we can make a break for it whenever you say. Now, hold it a minute. I think someone's coming. Oh! Hello. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Well, we didn't mean to frighten you. Here, let me help you with those things. I got caught in the rain. <laughs> so did we. We were out sightseeing. I didn't know anyone ever came up to look at the old fort. Whew, I'm cold. May I have one of your cigarettes? Oh, sure, here. Oh, thank you. You're Yanks, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. You must be part of that new battalion that's stationed in Skullthorpe. That's right. 
So you live in Brankester? <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> the way you say it. It's Brankster. Well, you still haven't answered my question. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> Nor did I. Well, I'm, I'm a painter of sorts. My home is in Hunstanton. I'm working on a landscape for the old fort. There. That answer all your questions? Is it our turn to apologize now? I, I think what Chuck means is that you're probably the first person in this whole area who's taken the trouble to talk to us. We British have a reputation for being quiet and reserved, you know. Wow. You've never had to face a cold town on an overnight pass. <laughs> no one to talk to, no place to go. Well, then it's my turn to be sorry again. What are your names? Well, I'm Chuck Rennie. I'm Ralph Barkley. I'm Cynthia Lawrence. That's terribly British, isn't it? I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Well, doesn't look like the rain's going to stop. Should we make a dash for it? Oh, wait a second. We can't let you go running off into the rain. What are you doing tomorrow? It's Sunday. Would you like to come to the base for dinner? Oh, better still. Why don't you two come and have dinner with me? Oh, I don't know. Uh, we just thought... Oh, I see. I'm not one of the poor, starved islanders. Daddy owns a resort hotel at Hunstanton, and I think we can spare a stray bone or two. Yeah, thanks. That's wonderful. Hey, wait till Johnny hears about this. Yeah. Who's Johnny? Oh, he thinks the sun rises and sets on Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He's a very unhappy boy in merry old England. Well, good. Then let him come, too. Make it at five. But now I must run, rain or no. Oh, wait. You haven't told us where it is. Oh, it's the Saxon Shore, right on the edge of town, near the big seawall. Did you say the Saxon Shore? Is anything wrong? Oh, no. No, I guess not. Come on, then. Let's make a break for it. Good lover, boy. What's got into him? <laughs> Easy, Junior. Don't strain yourself. We got you invited to dinner tomorrow night. Who needs you? Me? She's sweet. See, you're coming <laughs> At down the risk of being obvious, what does she way? look like? A dreamboat with tea and crumpets. Well, come off your cloud, dreamboat, and give us some pertinent details. I guess it must be that never-say-die spirit. There I was, lost in the rain, and all of a sudden... She fell out of a cloud. She was yeah. floated in on a raindrop. Uh, and I saw this place. The Cosby. And yeah. there she was, Salome with a seven veil. All right, you guys, just because you're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> Listen to him. Just so happens we have a little invite ourselves tomorrow night. Listen to that. Yeah. I was hoping it would be nice tomorrow. Like maybe a moon and some stars. Oh, take it easy, lover boy. You just met the girl. Boy, when it rains around here, it really rains. What do you see, Ralph? Looks rough out there. The storm in this area must really be something to contend with. This is all reclaimed land below water level. Hey, hey, guys, I just thought of something. Maybe I could take one of them new rafts to go calling on my girl, huh? <laughs> well, if this keeps up, you may not be kidding. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Saxon Shore. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Attention all high school graduates. Here's career news that really makes sense. Under the Army's new technical training program, you may actually take your pick of 87 great courses and have a classroom seat set aside for you before you enlist. That's right. You can choose freely from one of the many varied, exciting Army technical courses now being offered in such fields as radar, guided missiles, automotive maintenance, photography, and many, many others. Now, if the classes are filled, or if for some reason you don't qualify, you're under no obligation to enlist. As a matter of fact, you're under no obligation at all. What could be a better and fairer deal? And consider these other great benefits. 30 days paid vacation a year, free medical and dental care, and most important... The knowledge that you're serving your country proudly. Find out how you can become a skilled specialist on Uncle Sam's team. Talk it over with your high school guidance counselor or see the friendly recruiting sergeant at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Be sure. Be Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Saxon Shore. The storm rouses itself, 
turns on its heels and attacks. The sea roars in anguish and wretches a confused pattern of leaping wetness over the land. The sky weeps. The wind torments itself with endless wailing. Fragile as a child's toy stand the shore installations, the piers and breakwaters waiting. All distinction between air and water is lost. The land and sea become one. The fierce thundering that was the sky becomes the roar of the waves, cutting back a cliff, stripping away tons of sand. Hey, uh, wake up, sunshine. Uh, uh, You're gonna get your feet wet if you want any child this morning. Oh, oh. Go away, will you, officer? I didn't do nothing. Lover boy, today's your big day. Rise and face the world. All right, guys, up and out of Let's do it. Hey, Sarge. Ain't you forgot it's Sunday? All leaves and passes canceled. All men to report to the rec hall by 0930. What? Oh, did you hear what I heard? Oh, yeah, you're not kidding. Hey, hey, Ralph. You better ride out of there, Johnny. I'm not kidding. The lieutenant's up in arms this morning. Well, what's up, Ralph? I don't know for sure, Chuck, but it's something to do with this storm. It doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Lovely weather for ducks. Well, what's with our dinner tonight? Looks like it's out, unless things clear up a bit. Millie! My dream boat. We got a date for tonight. I'm sorry, kid. It's the elements we're against this time. I knew it. Nothing ever happens, but it happens to oh, me. Oh, stop your complaining. We're all stuck. Why, well, is it really that bad out? Listen, I got routed out of my sack at six this morning to secure some stuff that got blown loose last night, and I didn't think I'd get back. Well, hadn't we better call Cynthia and tell her it looks like things are off for tonight? I've already tried. The telephone lines are down between here and Hunston. Holy mackerel. My date will be waiting for me. Look. Let's use some sense. If it's bad here, it's twice as bad down there, right on the sea. Yeah, poor kid. Well, where does she live, John? In a, a place right on the water. She works there, too. It's called the uh, Saxon Shore. Well, I wouldn't have believed it. Not about you guys. Well, Cynthia's father owns that place. That's where we were headed, too. Well, whatever. I wouldn't like to be in their shoes right at this moment. <laughs> All right, men, hold up a second. I guess you've all been out in this this morning, so you know pretty well what's brewing. Well, if it's any consolation to you, it's a lot worse than it looks. These winds are going to reach Hurricane Force before they're through. We've had word from London that the Prime Minister has declared this a national emergency. As we've been able to get the story, this whole coastal area is underwater. The entire command in this area has been committed to do what they can to help. Now, we'll be pulling out of here in an hour. Pack all your rescue equipment, heavy-duty clothing. Any questions? Okay, men, dismissed. Okay, men, all out. This looks as far as we can get. All right, Sergeant. Get your men loaded up as soon as you can. There's some British soldiers filling sandbags about a quarter of a mile from here. I'll try to uh, follow that exposed ridge up there, that line of trees. Yes, sir. Report to the British officer in charge. I'll get the rest of these men set and join you. Make sure you've got some exposure clothing and some inflatable rafts. I think you'll be able to put them to good use. Yes, sir. Uh, Lieutenant. Yes, Sergeant. How far away from Hunstanton? Oh, uh, a little over a mile. It's in the area you ought to cover. Following that ridge, you're working your way toward the sea. Now, if that's all, Sergeant. You'd better get cutting quick as you can. I'll see you in about an hour. All right, men. Lend a hand here with some of this equipment. Okay. Where are we heading? Up that ridge there, toward the sea. Yeah, but my mama wouldn't want me to get my feet wet. Come on, John. A little less chatter. Everybody take some of this gear. Right. Okay, you guys. Load it up. Yeah. All right. Let's get going. Sir, I'm Sergeant Barkley of the United States Army over at Skullthrope. Oh, I'm Lieutenant Parker. Glad to see you, chaps. We certainly can use you. Well, we have some equipment with us, sir, if it can be of any use. Inflatable life rafts and life belts, heavy-duty lines, rubber exposure... Oh, sir, this will be splendid. We've been trying to get a boat across to the town without success. Swamping every time. Well, these are built for heavy sea, sir. All right, then. Let's give them a chance. Oh, Driscoll. Right. Ready. Yes, Bring the rafts over here. Let's inflate a couple of the big ones. Wet, ain't it? Okay, let's throw one up. All right, John, inflate it. Right. Say, that's magnificent, Sergeant. Are you sure they won't swamp? Well, if they do, they're easy enough to write. How many people will these hold? Well, these will hold four. We've got some bigger ones, too. Oh, these will do. Now, 
If you can see through this rain, right through there where I'm pointing... Uh, Rob, Harvey, yes, that's right. Those are all still occupied. We've got to evacuate those people to higher ground back here. Those houses will never be able to withstand this bigger blow. All right, sir. It's done. Very good, Sergeant. Let me know how you're progressing. All right, guys. Now, here's the story. Excuse me, sir. Yes, my boy? Do you know of a place called the Saxon Shore? Oh, the old inn outside the village? Yes, yes, sir. I guess that's the place. Now, do you think that that inn would be in much trouble with a storm like this? Well, I don't know, my boy, but you'll soon find out. If it's right on the edge of that area, you're headed into Take it easy there. Slow and easy. Yeah, right. hey, that's it. Up. That's fine. You'll be all right now. Hi, Chuck. How you doing? Oh, it's tough, Sergeant. I know. I made the trip over myself. It's not too bad coming back, but going, the wind keeps whipping the boat over. I've been in a drink more than I've been out of it. Now, take a break. I've set up an aid station in the chapel back on the main road. Grab yourself a cup of hot tea. It'll do wonders. Okay. Take along a change of clothing. And, oh, yeah... Uh, put a rubber exposure suit on. Johnny's been working in one. He says it's great. Okay, I'll get one. Okay, shove off. What's the matter? Ralph, I've located the inn. Oh, what are you talking about? The Saxon Shore. Cynthia's place. Yeah. Ralph, let me try it. We've almost cleared that whole peninsula across there. The inn lies about another 150 yards on the other side of it. Ah, you're crazy. You'll be risking your life for nothing. They probably cleared out of there hours ago. No, no, they couldn't have. One of the people I brought across told me their boardwalk is out. What do you mean? Well, the inn's on a sandbank, protected by a big seawall. There's shallow water between it and the shore. And it's all connected by a boardwalk. Look, go and change your clothes. But, Ralph, the boardwalk's gone. The way the sea is pounding, the inn's not going to last either. Rough, boss. Plenty rough. Yeah, I know. It's kicking up even more. It ain't so bad coming back. It's getting there that killed you. I remember once in Lancaster. Knock we off, had a Johnny, storm. will you? How are things coming, Sergeant? Uh, pretty tough, sir. My men are having difficulty getting across in this high wind with these light boats. And I think we're almost through evacuating. How's that, sir? We've made a checklist back at the chapel. I think almost all of the people in this section of the town are accounted for. Uh, one group we've heard nothing from, the owner and boarders in that seaside place your young friend was asking me about. The Saxon Shore. Yes. Hey! That, that's the place where Millie works. Let me get in the drink again. I'll go get my Millie. I holler, John. No, no. If Millie's in trouble, i got to save You're her. You're crazy. You'd never make it. He's right, my boy. You think this sheltered side is rough? Facing the wake of open sea would be murder on one of these. Say, wait a minute. John. Huh? How tall are you? Five, seven. Why? Well, how, how tall is Chuck? I don't know. He stands about six or seven inches taller than you. Now, that's right. Now, he's well over six feet. Sir... Did you ever go swimming at Hunstanton? Yes, well, many times. Why do you ask? Well, Chuck said the beach between the town and the inn is shallow. You recall how shallow? Well, I know we never bathe in that section of the plunge. It's much too shallow for decent swimming. And much higher than your waist? Well, I'd say not, no. Uh, sir, one of my boys is going to make another trip. Well, Sergeant, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. How you doing over here? Lieutenant, fine, sir. One more trip over should finish. Good. Let me know when you're through. We're still a long way from beating this thing. Okay, Chuck, you better shove off. Hold it a minute there, Rennie. What are you doing? Oh, I'm going to pull this raft across, sir. What is this, Sergeant? Uh, my order, sir. There are still people left out there. Well, let them go in the raft. Well, the empty rafts have been swamping in the high wind, sir. Tipping out. Coming back full, they've ballast enough to stay upright. He'll drown in this water. Excuse me, sir, but Rennie's well over six feet. The water between here and the peninsula is quite shallow. Even with the wind, he'll still be above the waterline. Well, I don't know. Then when he goes on, he goes on. Yes, sir. You see, we're trying to reach an inn out about another hundred yards from the shoreline. It's all shallow water. You seem to have this all pretty well figured, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Rennie, how do you feel about this? Fine, sir. That exposure suit tight? Yes, sir. This is February, you know. That water's almost down to freezing temperature person in ordinary clothing wouldn't last five minutes in that water. I know all that, sir. All right, Rennie, go ahead. See anything, Sergeant? He's doing fine, sir. He 
It's up on the opposite beach. How much further out did you say that in was? About another hundred yards. Uh-huh. Anything wrong, sir? I'm just thinking, Sergeant. I used to be a dash man in college. I used to make a hundred and under ten seconds. Well, it'll take Chuck a little longer than that, I guess. I only wish there was some way we could help him now. Well, there is a way, sir. Pray. Sergeant, will you stop that infernal pace? Well, sir, he's had time to get over and back already. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I know that. I guess we're all on edge, sir. Looks like the weather's easing off a bit. It uh, looks like it. Look, Sergeant, let's give him another 15 minutes and then... Then what, sir? I don't know, Sergeant. I don't know. All right, Sergeant, we can't wait any longer. Let's make a try for it. Yes, sir. All right, John. Lend a hand here. We're going over. Right. With all three of us in the raft, it should stay upright going over. We we'll worry about coming back when we get there. Sarge! Look, Sarge. Over the other side. I don't think there's any need of our going now, sir. Where, Sarge? Where? I can't see a thing in this mist. Right there. The edge of those trees. You're right. It's one of our rafts. And if I'm not mistaken, it's full, too. Chuck! Chuck, over this way. He sees it. Billy! Billy, it's that! Go ahead, Johnny. In the drink. Give him a hand. That's right, Sergeant. Give him a hand. Now, look, Albert, I've always said these Yanks was fine chaps. You're right, Henry. <laughs> Absolutely right. Here, Yank, how about me staying for a pint? Well, pal, I think I've got time for one more, but remember, this is the last. I got me a date in about an hour. Oh, <laughs> now, Henry, isn't that nice? These fine boys here courting our girls. Albert, it does me art good. Come on, John. <laughs> about ready? We're almost due out there. Just cementing Anglo-American relations for the Army. Okay, kid. But uh, I think a storm already did it for you. Right now, here's an important message for young men who are high school graduates. Never before in history has there been such a need and such an opportunity to serve your country and yourself as there is today in the United States Army. If you're qualified, there are careers open for you in radio, radar, weather, communications, and many others. So visit your nearest recruiting office soon and get all the details. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>